One of the most fascinating parts of your book, in my view, was your description of what happened at Reddit. And you say that you were effectively forced to resign, and they brought back uh, the founders. Steve Huffman came back as CEO. Um, for the record, what happened at Reddit? I think we had a lot of change that had to happen. So Ishan came in a couple years before I did and really tried to transform the company. It was you know, a small startup with just mostly white men, started by two white men, and that culture was very strong of um, exclusion. Mm -hmm. And as Ishan came in, he brought in different people. All the women kept getting pushed out. I ended up joining and um, in, in I think 2013, and worked with Ishan to push a lot of change together. Um, you know, this was a group that didn't want mobile, right? So mm -hmm. it was very conservative, very locked into um, the product as it was, and we were trying to bring it in to reach more people, to have more conversations. And I think, um, you know, and I think the change was really hard on the community. It was really hard on the employees, and it just took, you know, it took a lot of effort to get to where we got um, at the end of that. You made an effort to cut down on hate. You banned uh, several of the most hateful sub reddits, and there's some evidence to show that it actually worked. Um, there's a study that came out that showed that they have, have significantly cut down on hate. Do you think that online harassment would be such a problem if? more women had been involved in designing these systems in the first place? I think if more women of color, and especially underrepresented women of color, were involved at higher levels, um, it would be completely different because it's, you know, the people who get harassed the most who really understand how the systems work and really see all the ways it gets um, distorted into ultimately presenting a certain view and having that dominate the conversation. And if you can't come at it from that kind of minority, mm -hmm. uh, small group perspective, it's really hard to see everything that's going on. So how would it be different? How would Twitter be different? How would Reddit be different? Oh, I think it'd be, I think people would have invested more in um, tools, would have invested more in community management, would have had different rules, would have taken down more of the content faster and taken and banned more of the people in a more consistent way. Um, but it's hard when you don't put enough resources because those problems scale with the with the user base. And if you're not putting in the frameworks and if you're not putting in the tools, um, it gets out of hand very quickly. How much hope do you have for Twitter? I mean, can Twitter at this point, 10 years in, get its harassment problem under control? I don't know. I know they're trying and they have made some incremental improvements, but I, I really do believe that it's going to take a lot of work to get rid of all of the harassment and make sure that everybody feels comfortable participating in the platform. I think they should ban Donald Trump. I think that's a huge problem, that he has this behavior that's very um, counter to the terms of service, and yet he continues to be given this huge platform to dominate and to to encourage more of the same bad behavior. So you think Twitter should ban Donald Trump? Like I'm one of many people who believes that. It's not just me, and I think um, with good reason. What is the reason? He is harassing of people. He, you know, he threatens people on the platform, and then he uses his um, influence to get people to harass other people on the platform. What about the people who would come back and say free speech? There's so it's such a um, red herring. I think um, there are many reasons why. Uh, people say free speech, I mean, it's an easy thing, then you can say whatever you want on the platform. And we saw on Reddit, when you when you allow free speech, it's the people who are dominant on the platform who can bully everybody else off. Mm -hmm. And there's also an issue of, you know, you, everybody limits some speech on the platform. You ban spam, you ban, um, you know, certain types of harassment. So there's not, so people are not having complete free speech on the platform already. This is just driving um, the rules to protect people from getting harassed off the platform so you can have as many voices as possible. I think the purpose of free speech is to allow everybody to be able to have a voice, to have these conversations, and if a, one group is pushing everybody else off, you can have, you know, this, free speech platform, but there are not many voices or opinions being uh, represented. So Hannah Beth Jackson, Senator Hannah Beth Jackson, is pa planning to introduce a bill mm -hmm. that would explicitly prohibit harassment in the venture capital industry. What's your take on, on the bill, or how optimistic are you that legislation could solve this problem? I'm, I'm hopeful, right? I think 
everything else hasn't solved it so far. I think the shaming has started to help a little bit, like people coming out and saying, this is not acceptable. You can't go on an airplane and experience what I experienced, which is people talking about porn stars, talking about sex acts, talking about prostitutes, right? That, like, that's not acceptable anymore, and now you know that, so you should change your behavior. But, you know, I'm hearing it's not changing quite yet, so we need something else to help, and everything, I think, will help, but I don't think that's going to be the one thing that prevents it, because these people do think that they're above the law. They don't think the law applies to them, so you need to keep pushing that public perception and pushing, you know, and telling the stories. I think the most impactful thing is all of these women telling their stories. On that last note, you know, you mentioned the porn-obsessed CEO. We saw that uh, also in your the excerpt of your book. You don't mention his name. His name did come up in the trial. Why did you leave his name out? And, you know, what else did you leave out? I'm sure, you know, there's a lot that you didn't put in there. For various I reasons. wanted the book to be as fair as possible. So, um, with the CEO, I don't know him that well. Maybe he had an off day. Maybe he was goaded into doing something by Ted. I, I just don't know. So, I didn't want to have this one incident kind of. Um, you know, this one experience for five hours be the, the way that I portrayed him to the whole public. Um, I think I tried to be fair. I tried to keep people's families out of it. I tried to, um, you know, I had a friend and, and our view was like no collateral damage. So these, you know, you have the people who are the protagonists and who are the main people that I interacted with and who helped me back and who are holding a lot of other people back. And they were the people I wanted the story to focus on.